Good morning everyone. Tara, basa na tayo na ating history book. Kapwa ka Pilipino, magbasa na tayo na ating history, sariling history. History of the Filipino people by Agoncillo N. Guerrero. Today is 28 March 2023. History of the Filipino people, part 6, the Third Republic, topic number 28, external affairs. Nandito tayo sa paragraph, anti-communism as a policy. Basa. Anti-communism as a policy, the first intimation of the official policy on communism may be gleaned from President Manuel Rojas' speech at Clark Field on April 15, 1948. It was the time of the Cold War and the United, and the United States, now hostile to Soviet Russia, was exerting efforts to win nations to her side. Rojas was invited by the American military at Clarkfield, an American enclave in the Philippines, to speak before the American soldiers to spell out officially the Philippines stand on the Russo-American Cold War. Rojas, who owed his election to the presidency to the Americans, mainly to MacArthur and McNutt, eloquently committed the Filipino yield to the American side. Rojas, of course, had been anti-communist as shown, as, as shown by his outlawing of the communist lead Hok Balaha organization, which opposed him vigorously in the 1946 election. Upon his death on the very day that, the, that he delivered his IOO, ito yung namatay siya after ng speech niya. Okay, upon his death on the very day that he delivered his fellow American America wherever she goes speech, his successor Carino and the other presidents after him made anti-communism a credo. On September 24, 1956, the British scholar Arnold Toynbee, the celebrated author of The Massive, The Study of History, spoke of the Philippine Columbian Club and was asked after his lecture whether he was in favor of outlawing communism. His answer was shocking to the intelligence committee and the professional with centers. He was seized against outlawing communism, for this would only force the communists to go underground. The wisdom of his remark was proved when Congress, during Carlos P. Garcia administration, passed the anti-subversion law, which outlawed communism in the Philippines. The handful of Filipino communists promptly went underground and the intelligence agencies resorted to, un resorted to unfounded suspicions, unreasonable accusations, and plain prejudice to harass and smear the reputation of men and women who refused to swear by conformism. conformism. All it. And plain prejudice to us and is murder reputation. Okay, all it ko lang ha. And is murder reputation of men and women who refuse to swear by conformism and parochialism. The period from approximately 1950 to 1967 may be described as the era of which hunting professors, labor leaders, and students with a liberal orientation were branded pinks or reds or fellow travelers, thus making them suspects in the eyes of the public. It was a season of trial by publicity when a man's reputation was smeared in the name of democracy. President Ferdinand Marcos, young senior to Gaisa, however, refused to be stampeded into ordering the government's intelligence agencies to arrest the dissenters and nonconformists in Philippine society. Instead, he partially, partially relaxed the ban on travel to communist countries, a relaxation that led to the acceptance by Filipinos, some of whom were legislators and newspaper men of invitations to visit China. By 1968, businessmen Legislators, businessmen, legislators, and newspapermen 
handgun not only to reach China but also to such communist countries such as but also to such communist countries as Inolico Soviet Soviet Russia, Romania, Yugoslavia, Poland, Czechoslovakia, and East Germany to know more about these countries and to lay the ground for future trade and cultural relations with them. In the same year, Russian scholars, some of whom could speak Tagalog better than Many Filipinos were allowed to enter the Philippines, and in 1969, some Russian ballet dancers were invited to perform at the Meralco Auditorium. Another group of Russians composed of a lady, a scholar of Philippine history, a journalist, and a bureaucrat came to Manila for a visit and were invited to many parties given in their honor. Such reception would have been labeled communist in the 1950s. Even so, there are still Filipinos who think in terms of the Cold War of the late 1940s and the 1950s and consequently would not hear of any relations with communist countries. Recent developments, however, show them to be dwindling into the minority, even the rapid Catholics who trembled with holy indignations indignation at the very mention of communism have revised their attitude and are now more or less resigned to accepting trade and cultural relations with communist countries countries the reason for this turn about lies not only in the recognition of the hard realities of international politics but also in the changes that have swept and are still sweeping the Vatican precisely since the liberal minded Pope John twenty third twenty three ascended the papal throne. Oh para pala yung Pope John twenty three Ascended the papal throne, the ecumenism which he began is being continued by his successor, Pope Paul VI. This ecumenism has resulted in the liberalization of the church's thinking and practices, including the recognition of the necessity to coexist with people of opposite or even hostile ideologies ideological orientation. The conditioning of the Filipino officials' mind to absolute anti-communism, even to the extent of being ridiculous, has not made the Filipino position in Asia inviable. On the contrary, most ASEAN countries, particularly those with independent foreign policies, consider the Philippines still under the colonial rule of the United States. Mapilindo Philippine foreign policy has not changed since 1946. Its second block, that of cultivating closer relations with ASEAN countries, has been implemented more or less haphazardly. In 1962, however, Makapagal took an active interest in bringing together the peoples of Malay stock. He proposed a summit conference among the leaders of the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaya. Consequently, a conference on the ministerial level was held in Manila from June 7 to 11, 1963, resulting in a 16-point agreement among the three countries of Malaysia. This agreement, known as the Manila Accord, was approved in Manila on July 31, 1963, and signed by Makapagal Sukarno of Indonesia and Tungko Abdul Rahman of the Federation of Malaya. On August 6, the chiefs of the of state of the three countries issued the Manila Declaration in which they laid down the principles that would guide their countries known as Mapilindo, Malaya, the Philippines, and Indonesia. Namely, first, that they reaffirm their adherence to the principle of equal rights and self-determination of peoples as initiated 
as initiated in the United Nations Charter and the Bandung Declaration. Second, that they are determined in the common interest of their countries to maintain fraternal relations to strengthen cooperation among their peoples in the economic, social, and cultural progress and social well-being in the region and to put an end to the exploitation of man by man and of one nation by another. Third, that the three nations shall combine their reports, their airports, sorry. Third, that the three nations shall combine their efforts in the common struggle against colonialism and imperialism in all their forms and manifestations and for the eradication of the vestiges thereof in the region in particular and the world in general. Fourth, that the three nations as new emerging forces in the region shall cooperate in building a new and better world based on national freedom, social justice, and lasting peace. And fifth, that in the context of the joint endeavors of the three nations to achieve well, it, fifth, that in the context of the joint endeavors of the three nations to achieve the foregoing objectives, they have agreed to take initial steps towards the establishment of Mapilindo by holding frequent and regular consultations at all levels to be known as Moshawara Mapilindo. Bukas na itong the break up guys. So, for 29 March 2023. Bye everyone. God bless.